it's time to talk about Phantasm 3. I got the newest, like, five pack, and I just realized that Phantasm 2 is actually called The Ball is Back. Is that right? I thought it was just called Phantasm 2, but it says right there, The Ball is Back. This is Phantasm 3, Lord of the Dead. Kind of like Day of the Dead and Can uh, Candyman 3, which is an absolute awful movie. But this one was okay. Three entries in a row that I thought were okay. These are decent watches. These are movies that are more for the visuals and characters, the humor and atmosphere and whatnot. It is not about story and you know being coherent and actually having an explanation and you knowing what the fuck's going on because I still don't know what the hell is going on. There is still no answers to any questions I have. This ain't no like hereditary where there's an actual explanation behind what's going on but you just kind of have to really soak in the movie and dissect scenes and be like okay this means this and this means that and there's actual breadcrumbs left in the movies where you can you know piece things together and come up with theories there's no theories on this it's either like everything's a dream and everything's not hap or everything like everything's not happening or everything did happen or it's just a dream but then they wake up but the tall man is really just controlling them and making them think they've woken up but really they're just in a different dream it's inception like what the fuck is going on welcome to another horror franchise wednesday by the way i forgot to say that in the opening welcome uh, if you haven't seen my Phantasm 1 or 2 review, I'll try to leave a card or a link for you to click on so you can hear all my other ramblings about how I'm confused and this don't make sense. And here's the thing about that. Like, that's honestly, like, the biggest problem I have with this franchise. This is an okay franchise. I'm not going to take anything away from it. If you love it, that's good. Good for you. I'm glad you like it. But these movies don't work that well for me because of the story. It, because it's just ambiguous and just on purpose and you can do that on purpose as long as you as the writer slash director have an in-game goal uh an explanation like you're trying to get people to find out what you already know somehow on their own and you're like you can leave breadcrumbs and you can leave like little explanations here and there but don't spoon feed it to the audience don't do like a end of psycho where they're like you know oh he was crazy because his mom was mean to him and then he wore her clothes not because he's a transvestite but because it you know blah 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 it's like just spoon feeding shit like i'm not asking to be spoon fed i'm just asking for you to at least leave something behind where i can take pieces from scenes and be like okay well because this happened that means this happened because of that and you know because this happened that means this and this and that and you know in part one like something to connect these films together to have them flow narratively have a narrative that makes fucking sense but it's just the same movie again and again and that's the biggest problem it pulls like the friday the 13th in stinger like literally just the same shit again and again and again and that's my biggest problem with the movies it's just that now if i haven't seen four and five yet but that's, i've been told by multiple sources that it's the same thing you know fake out indie it's all a dream and blah 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 it's no no answers no further exploration you know, if they do explore anything or expand it's barely anything they barely give you any answers you get a couple of small things in this movie like you get like one scene where they kind of touch base on like a motive maybe like maybe there's like a motive we're being given and you know just little things no, nothing major like it still doesn't make sense narratively one two and three if you put them all in canon together like what the hell actually happened what hasn't happened can anybody explain this to me let's just get into the movie a uh, quick plot synopsis this is taking place like right after part two or maybe it's like two years later it didn't say but on wikipedia it said it was two years later so this is like two years later mike gets captured by the tall man and now uh, reggie is on a, another road trip to search and destroy the tall man but he picks up a couple of friends along the way and they kick ass they use their skills to defeat the tall man and his minions except this time he doesn't have the dwarfs he has like zombies and whatnot uh, Spoiler-ish? Whatever. So let's go into the cons for this movie. The acting is weaker at this point. This one feels more B-movie-like. The tone is definitely different. They insert way more humor, and it's very hit or miss. Some of it landed for me, especially, like, the humor between Reggie and Rocky. Just him, like, trying to get her in her pants and her just resisting him. I thought at any moment she was going to kick his ass, but surprisingly she did not. Um, 
So yeah, the, the tone's way different. It's like it's not way over the line. It's not like tapping into like Freddy's dead territory where it's like wacky and cartoony or anything like that. But looking back to part one and two and then like kind of doing a side by side comparison of tones, this one does dip its toe further over the line of like way more comedic. It's not trying to be that scary at all. So I, I'll say that. And that could be a good thing for you if you like the more comedic approach, or it could be a bad thing. Me, I'm just like, nah, I prefer the tone of one and two. You know, two almost has the same tone, but it's just more ramped up with like the violence and, you know, the action and whatnot. And so, yeah, the acting was just poor on almost everybody's performance. Almost everybody. Like, even Reggie, just a little slight downgrade from part two. I mean, he's not the best actor. None of these people are, but they're serviceable. They're decent enough. But in this one, I just feel like everybody was either okay or just not good at all. Like, Michael Baldwin, he comes back from the first movie, the little kid. He's much older now, obviously. It's like over 15 years later in between one and three. And I feel like he's even worse. Like, I didn't like him that much in part one, his acting, and now it's, like, even worse. Same ending, same ending as one, same ending as two. Again, right here, same ending. I feel like the kills and effects are not as uh, rapid. Like, there's not as much as part two. Like, there's a lot more cool stuff in part two with the ball. They use it a lot better in part two. There's a lot more balls, <laughs> a lot more spheres in this one. And they don't do that much. So that was kind of a letdown. And another thing that's not used in this movie quite as much is the dwarves. Where do they go? Like, in the first two, they seem to have a heavy presence in the movie. Like, they're the minions. They're always around the corner. And that was what was supposed to be scary in the first one, especially. It's like these creepy dwarves hiding in the shadows. Where are they? They're not in this movie, like, at all. Like, in the beginning, maybe? But then it's like two years later, and they're gone. Bye-bye. You just got these zombies. Like, why weren't they turned into dwarves? When the three minions, the tall, like, scavengers or whatnot, they get converted into minions, they're not shrunken down, they're not crushed or anything, nothing. They're just, they're normal height and size. Why is that? Why change the rules? Don. This one just feels like an unnecessary sequel. Like, I would have just been happy with one and then happy with two, because I think two is a little bit better than part one. But this one just doesn't do anything. It doesn't explore. It doesn't answer any questions. It's not anywhere as good as part two, at least in my opinion. I mean, this one's right below it. I mean, it's not boring. It's a well-paced movie, so it's not a shit film. Like I said, I think all these movies so far, one, two, and three, are decent. But man, is the story the weakest aspect of these films. It's just, what is going on? So yeah, it's just an unnecessary sequel. I feel like they should have just stopped it too. And this is the first, like, direct-to-VOD, or I guess DVD at the time. This is the first direct-to-DVD movie because I guess Universal didn't want to release it. Uh, the things that I could point out that I do like is we get way more quad shoddy. The quadruple barrel shotgun. He somehow has his shotgun back. I don't know how, like... In part two, he threw it away, and now he's he's got it back somehow. I don't know if he just went back to get it. I don't know. So he's got the shotgun back. He's blasting people away a lot more with it. He uses it quite a few times, and Reggie is still the best character. He still steals the show. He's still the funniest character. He has the best moments, and he's the heart and soul of the movie, really. And you get a little bit more tall man. I felt like there was less tall man in part two than there was in one. And this one gives you the tall man even more. Like he's in the first minute of the movie. You just Boom, there he is. There's some cool visuals in this movie. Some cool like blue lighting in this scene. Green and red. They use a lot of cool colors and like strobe lights in the background. Like lasers or whatnot. Some interesting visuals. Like I said, I feel, I feel like Don Coscarelli was going more for the look of the film. And not the story as much. There's still some story here, but it's not it's not coherent. It's, it's very convoluted and makes no sense. And I like the humor between Reggie and Rocky. And just him trying to get in her pants and her shutting him down. And he's very forward. I, in one scene, he seems like almost a rapist. Like, he's a little too pushy. He gets a little too pushy in one scene. And it actually kind of took me back by surprise. Like, almost 
tainted his character a little bit because you don't like a guy to be all pushy and, you know, like, no means yes. Come on, Rocky. He almost got to that level. And I'm surprised she didn't blast his face. Um, the pace of this movie was good. I wasn't ever, I was never really that bored. And the, I could tell that the MPAA fucked off for this one in part two. You could tell that things were cut. And this one, you get the same callback ball kill on the head. And you actually get to see the blood shooting out for multiple frames. It's not like two frames and it cuts away. It comes back for two frames, cuts away. Like part two. It actually just keeps going. So no MPAA here, probably because it didn't get a theatrical run. I bet. I bet that's why. Or maybe I'm watching some unrated version. I don't even know about it. Uh, final thoughts. This one was an okay sequel, but I just wasn't that impressed by it. I'm still confused, as always. I like that it has some continuity. You know, the story, it's still picking up right after the events of 2. It's got the main actor back from the first one. It even brings back the main brother, Jody, from the first one. And some, <laughs> for some reason, his ghost looks 15, 20 years older. Like, I guess you age in the afterlife for some reason. I get the real reason, like, you can't, you know, do what Disney's doing nowadays with the de-aging effect. They didn't have that back then. But it's just funny when you see a character playing their ghost and they died at like 20 years old, but now they look like they're 35 playing their 20-year-old ghost. And it's just, I have to point it out because I'm a nitpicker. It's just, I, had to, I just had to say it. But it's an okay sequel. If you're a fan of the first two and you haven't seen the third one, go in with low expectations, but you're, I don't think you'll be all that impressed by it. But give it a shot. So when it comes to Phantasm 3, I recommend you borrow it from a friend, stream it, or rent it at Redbox. All right, now let's quickly go into my spoiler discussion. But first, who's the hottest chick? The hottest chick in this movie is the scavenger chick, Edna. I think that was her name. And the best scene in this movie is the cat fight at the end between Rocky and the ghost Edna or zombie Edna. I thought that scene was pretty entertaining. So this movie opens up with a montage like a Friday the 13th movie previously on. And the footage that they're using clearly is like purposely selected and edited in a way where you don't see the actor in part two playing Mike. And... We find out that there's more than one tall man, so there's just multiple ones in multiple dimensions, and there's multiple dimensions. We figure that out now, or at least I think. And I like that Liz, the girl character in part two, she's just done. I guess she didn't come back for part three. Maybe she wanted too much money, or they just didn't have any ideas of what to do with her character, so they just killed her off. She gets like her nose bitten off or something by like a dwarf, and then all of a sudden the tall man is just carrying her severed head away. And I was like, oh shit, they really fucked that character up. She is gone. Bye bye, Elizabeth. Bye bye, Felicia. And then he gets the quad barrel shotgun back. I don't know where he found it, or how he got it back. I thought he threw it away. And then Mike's in a coma now because of reasons. I, I'm not sure why. Uh, did the car, this, the hearse that they were driving, was it? Did it flip or something? I, I think it did. So then we find out that the spheres have brains now. There's some little exploration of the story. That's the expansion. Like he puts his victim's brains in the spheres so that they're his minions also. I, I, they didn't have brains before, but now they do. They even have like eyeballs that come out, which is just a funny visual. And then Mike, two years later, I guess, does it ever say in the movie, like, two years later? Because I didn't see that. So this whole time, like, both viewings, because I watched it and then I watched the commentary, it never said two years later. I didn't find that out until I read, like, a Wikipedia thing, and it was like, and then two years later, he wakes up from a coma. And I was like, oh, okay. When did the two years later thing pop up? Like, how were you supposed to know that? Because, like... Reggie, he gets his car back, and it's supposed to be the same car, right, from the first two movies, the one that flipped over and then blew up, because I was confused while watching the movie, I was like, that car just blew up in part two, and now he's just driving it down the road, like, it's the same month, I thought, nope, <laughs> I do think there was, like, one line when he's talking to the kid, and the kid's like, I want to drive your car, and he's like, you ain't driving my car, I've been fixing that car for, like, Two years now. And that, I guess that was the line that told you it was two years later. But anyways, Mike, he wakes up from his coma after 
his brother tells him to wake up. Like his brother, Jody, is now able to enter his dreams and give him messages. Why he can do that now, I don't know. Like why he didn't do it before, oh, up for interpretation, come up with your theories. He wakes up and there's an evil nurse attacking him. Some cool practical effects on her face. She looks all rotted and there's yellow ooze coming out of her. And then Jody, he's a sphere because he, I guess the tall man took his brain out and put it in the sphere. So now he's a sphere now and he tries to attack the, the tall man. But now the tall man, he's got these powers that came from I don't know where. Like in part one, he has telekinesis for like one scene where he throws Mike off of his bike. Yeah, that rhymes. And then in this one, he has telekinesis. Again, he's throwing Reggie up against the wall. And now he has like the power to like make you fall asleep or like silence you. Like, Mike's trying to, like, warn the little kid, uh, Kevin or whatnot, I don't know, and he just goes, Psh, and then he silences Mike. Like, he could just make you shut up. Like, where did that power come from? Where do these powers come from? No answers. Lots of questions. So, yeah, and then, like, Reggie's, not only is his car back, but his house is back. So, I guess this is just a new house. Maybe. Because that car was smither, that, that house and the car were smithereens, and now he has a whole new car that's the same car, and then a whole new house that I think was the same house, maybe. I guess not. That wouldn't make sense if it was. I would have to assume it's a different house. So he's driving through this abandoned town, and once again, we see all these abandoned towns where the tall man has killed everybody, and I guess nobody knows about it. Like, why is it in these movies, it seems like nobody knows about the tall man? Just Reggie and whatever one stranger in each town they bump into. Like, there's not that many people that know about the tall man. And if there's multiple cities, because they establish that they go from town to town to town in Oregon, this would be like almost a nationwide phenomenon. Like, oh my gosh, what the fuck's happening in Oregon? There's like cities that are just abandoned. Like, overnight, there's like 500 people dead. What the fuck? Or missing. That would be headline news every fucking day. Where are these people? But no one's talking about it, which I guess could be explained away that it's because it's all bullshit. It's a dream. I really like the scene, just the set design and the eeriness of the house with the dolls and the mannequins and whatnot, the clowns hanging around everywhere. I thought that was really cool. And they dispatched the scavenger people like they. OK, so very quick, let me just go off track real quick to point out this logical issue. OK, so the scavengers they rob Reggie of his car. They throw him in the trunk and drive him around. Why? Because they go into this random house. They assume there's these two elderly people on a couch. And without any hesitation, the main guy with the big old S stupid generic, you know, gangster medallion hanging off his chest, that guy blows a hole in the back of their heads like nothing. Absolutely no soul or heart in this guy. He is a stone cold killer. Because he thought those were real people, but thankfully they were just mannequins. But, you know, he's so quick to do that, but yet they, they kidnap Reggie and they throw him in the trunk to keep him? Why? Why not just blow his head off too? Like he's, the you know what I mean? It just feels convenient. But anyway, it's just the, the clowns, the whole aesthetic, the look of the house, it's very creepy. And then even like the kid has a mask on his face that looks really eerie. I wish he would have kept it. <laughs> It wouldn't make sense, but why not? Keep it. It's a cool visual. He has like all these traps set up and he throws a tomahawk at the girl's face, dispatches her very quickly. And then he has like this th th uh, frisbee with all these like razor blades on the side, which I think is a cool weapon. Um, and he just throws it and they, for some reason, just like look at it and they're like, oh, where's it, where's it go? And then it just sl it slits his throat. But what's funny is it doesn't like nick his throat like it would because it's a razor, right? It's not like all the razors would have just went up against it and went like all the way around. Like it would have just cut his throat, like just uh, maybe one, two inches. Like, it, like, But it cut all the way. Like it went like here all the way around. It's like bullshit. Sorry, I just have to call bullshit on that cut. And it doesn't look that good either. It's okay, but it's like he just he bends his neck back and all the blood's coming out. It's like, I don't think that Frisbee would have done that much damage. It would have cut him, yes, but that much? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go out back and see if it works. But yeah, the boy's alone in town. His parents were killed. And for some reason, the tall man didn't know about him or just didn't want him, left him alive, but he killed everybody else. And 
like I guess he's leaving the kids behind for some reason because there's like an orphanage that has all these leftover kids and this mother is or like mother not real mother but house mother or whatever is taking care of them for free she's like oh all these people were missing so i took i'm taking care of them now and reggie is like trying to bribe her or like give her money like pay her like all right here's like seven bucks you can keep this kid and somehow the kid was able to sneak into the trunk without the keys like is this a trunk where there's just like a button underneath and as long as the fob is nearby, it can just open. Like, how did he sneak in that trunk? How did he rig it open? Like, did he have, like, some kind of crowbar? How was that not, like, loud? Like, how did they not, like, again, nitpicking, diving way too deep into it, way too logical, I know. But seriously, how did he sneak into that trunk? I want to know. I like that we get to see a picture of Reggie's family. You know, it's a little callback to part two when he lost his family. And now we actually get to see what the hell they look like. We didn't know what they looked like before. We get the sphere callback kill. There's these two random people, these army people, I guess, these army chicks in this, you know, mortuary. And their goal is what? What were they going to do to Reggie? Why were they there? Because they don't have any knowledge of the tall man. When the ball comes, it's a surprise. They're like, what the fuck is that? And when Reggie talks about the tall man, she doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. But clearly, clearly there's some, uh, you know, correlation between them. Like, she lost her family, too. I think they say that, like, because he's like, you should join me because I'm going after the guy who's responsible for your predicament, like why you lost whoever or something. But she doesn't seem to know who the tall man is or the ball. Why are they there? Hey, and how do they, how does she not know about the tall man if the tall man wiped out her whole family and whole town and whatnot? I just got so many questions. I don't know. It's just, it's ridiculous. I like how the kid is a, a convenient crack shot. He can just shoot things from miles away, like so far away. And he's just an absolute crack shot. He should be giving like stormtroopers lessons because they suck. He's amazing. And once again, we got a kid dolphin diving out of a moving car that's going real fast. And the way he hits the ground, it's like his arms would be broken or sprained or something, but he just gets back up. He's okay. No bumps or bruises. He's fine. I call bullshit. No logical human being would let a nine-year-old drive their car. Just get the fuck out of here. Reggie is again after the girl. And he's like, you, do you ever try vanilla? And then she's basically, she keeps telling him no. And he's like, come on, just come on. You know, one more, I forget what he says, I didn't write it down. But yeah, he's like, do you ever try vanilla? And then he has like these like fantasies, these phantasms, you know, these fantasies of making love to her. And she's like, yeah, you're so big. So like in his dreams, he can get laid. And then Jody is like somehow able to pull a Freddy Krueger and like enter his dream world. And then teleport him into where uh mike is being located and like you know cap he's captive inside of like a crypt where somehow he's not dying of lack of oxygen like he's in a small crypt i don't know how long he's been there but eventually i don't think there's air pumping through there it's sealed shut he would die eventually but anyways yeah they teleport there and they somehow are able with like this is a dream world still so they go from dream to actual location where mike is being captive to pulling him th out of the dream into like where they were camping like what i'm sorry i i, I don't get that i just don't and then you know we see the portal things again and red reggie now remembers events that never technically happened supposedly like that never happened right As if i'm going by what they're saying you know that was all a dream it never happened like he's remembering like oh that's how we stop him it, it just didn't make sense how would he know about that that never happened that was not really reggie that n was all a dream and it wasn't his dream it was mike's so that just doesn't make sense to me but whatever no, nothing nothing in this fucking movie makes sense and then we find out the weakness finally we get a weakness for the tall man it's not acid like at the end of part two it's cold he doesn't like the cold and then why does he have cryogenics at his mortuary unless that was just left over from the mortuary the morticians that he killed or something like and the explanation is like, oh, remember in part one when he walks by the ice cream truck and the cold steam is like coming out of the ice cream truck? And he's like, that was him being like frightened, I guess. That's not how I read that scene. Like when I was watching part one, 
when I got to that scene, to me, it looked almost like it was pleasure. Like, he was like, yeah, this cold air. Like, it didn't seem like he was frightened by the cold air. I know it sounds like I'm bitching, but I enjoyed the movie. I just, I want to re remind you, I enjoyed the movie somewhat, you know. I just have questions and nitpicks, and that's what I'm here to do. This is going to be a long review, but I'll, I'll try to speed it up here real quick. Let's get this over with. So here you get the hand monster thing. It's kind of like a callback to the monster in part one that they throw in the sink, blah, blah, blah. And then we get this awesome car stunt that's better than the car stunt in part two. Where this car stunt, the car just goes flying. And it's like twisting like three, four times in the air. And it's just awesome looking. Like watching it, you're like, is there a guy in there? Because he'd be dead. But there was a guy in there and... He made it out. That was an awesome car stunt. We get this brief motive for why he's making these dwarfs and whatnot. I forget what it was because it's forgettable. I think, oh yeah, something like conquering dimensions, right? Something like that. So he just wants to conquer worlds, which is just one of the most bland, generic motivations for any video game bad guy ever, like Cortex. Like, what does he want to do? He wants to make mindless controlled animal creatures so he can conquer the world. It's just bad guy wants to take over worlds and dimensions motive. Really? I could have came up with that. But hey, at least there's something being offered, right? So I'll give them that. And then the scavengers, scavengers, they come back, not as dwarves for some reason. They're back and they look like they've been rotting for a while, even though they've only been dead like 24 hours at this point. They got like all kinds of rotted flesh and whatnot. And you think for a moment that the rocky chick is blowing reggie but then it's like the scavenger chick and then she gets the ball right through her face it's traveling so fast it goes right through her fucking face and that was the best kill in the movie so there you go mr hatterwolf the best kill is the scavenger chick who gets the ball right through her freaking dumb face and the mr twiggle war for lamest kill will go to the, one of the male scavengers who gets shot off camera by the kid i guess they didn't want to show a kid shooting anybody so they put the tall man in the freezer and then the tall man he has a sphere ball in his head and that escapes and that's what kills the scavenger chick and there's a cat fight going on at some point you know rocky and she's acting like buster rhymes and resurrection she's doing like kung fu whatnot she's got these nunchucks and this is when the movie gets extra silly and but it's all right i enjoyed it you know her kicking ass with that with the nunchucks and i heard that the actress actually took like nunchuck and kung fu lessons for like a month just to prepare for this role so dedication but they take the ball that came from the tall man's head they throw it in a nitrogen liquid nitrogen thing like the terminator in the terminator 2 they freeze him and then he's gone or so you think and then nope he's back there's multiple tall men and reggie's in the corner he's being like pinned by like a thousand balls and then the little kid he gets dragged through the window same ending there's always a guy getting dragged through the window and it's boom over and like the it also ends with like you know a one-liner from the tall man i forget what the other two were i think one of them was you know boy and then that was part one and part two it was no it's not and then this one he's like it's never over <laughs> i guess i'll go over my favorite shot in this movie is when reggie is in the hallway and you got the blue laser light behind him i thought that was a cool visual it's my favorite shot in the movie so those are my thoughts of this movie i know i talked a lot i have a lot of nitpicks and things i wanted to talk about so sorry if this was way too long if anybody's even still watching this sorry but i just i had to talk about it i had to raise all the questions that i had and hopefully you can give me some answers what are your theories explain this movie you know a cohesive explanation from one two and three what's going on and why you know explain this dimension thing and what's a dream what's not a dream if you can i would appreciate it just be nice about it don't be a fucking troll be nice about it anyways if you like what you're seeing here you can hit this like button share with all your friends become a patreon for as little as a dollar a month to request movie reviews and you can become a pa uh, supporter today a subscriber just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds and until next time i'll feed your scene